All right, let us welcome back one of our favorite guests of the show. She got back in the win column on Saturday with a third round submission win over Julia Stoliarenko at UFC Vegas 30. Let us say hello once again to, I guess we should call her submission specialist, Julia Avila. Is, is that where we're going with, Julia? How are you? Competitive snuggler. Competitive snuggler, Julia Avila. That's right. And now you get the cauliflower ear to, to, to match that moniker. Yeah, look at that. Mm. <laughs> How long did that take to acquire? 10 years, 10 years I've been doing this and uh, I finally got my cauliflower ear and I'm very excited about it. That's a big moment for you as well as a big moment for you on Saturday. Congratulations on the victory. First submission win of your career. How about that? Like that's your second. Mm -hmm. My first one was arm bar. Oh, when was that? Um, it was against, uh, it it was on an HD MMA. It was like a minute something, but yeah. Okay. All right, first UFC submission. First yes. UFC submission win. Okay, there we go. But how does it feel being back home, not just with the win and a finish, but you got to answer some questions at the same time by forcing a, a little tap tap. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but I train more on the ground than I do stand up. Um, so like it's, you know, that's my bread and butter. That's what I I, I feel I should be known for. But um, I hit pretty hard. I knew she was going to be durable, so I didn't. I knew I wasn't going to knock her out. Um, so I guess I had a suburb. <laughs> I mean, as expected, it was as advertised. The fight was very exciting. Julia, like you said, is, is such a gamer. You busted her up early. As you know, she has bled many times in her career, was part of one of the craziest fights we've seen in the last 18 months or so for Invicta. How much fun did you just have in there with, with somebody like that? Oh gosh. I knew, I knew I was going to have so much fun. And actually, so one of my coaches told me this, that in between rounds, I think the first and second round, um, the doctor asked her, you know, are you okay? And she said, I'm having the best day of my life. Just <laughs> blood, Right. And, uh, he came up to me and he's like, this, you, you bitches are crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. And it's absolutely awesome. She was so game and it was such a fun fight. The judges seem to be all over the place with the scoring. I don't know if you knew this, but one had it 2-0 for you heading into the third. One had it 19-19 heading into the third. And one had it 2018 for her, which is kind of wild to think about. But how did you and your team see it heading into the third round? Like, what was the conversation like after round two? So um, between the second and the third round, my coach, uh, he told me I, I lost the second round. Um, and he wanted me to find the finish. I said, okay, coach. Okay. Um, but he told me later that after that, um, it, he only said that because he wanted me to find the finish. He wanted me to, to feel like I was the underdog. Right. Um, but we all thought that I was winning the fight. The only thing I could think of is the, the judges maybe mistook which Julia was, which Julia, um, I hope that never happens. Like if I ever fight Juliana Pena, like that's <laughs> we got to make sure that they get the right J's. <laughs> that's crazy. And yeah. then, you know, you obviously the, the advice worked, you come out in the third, you get that finish in the final minute of the fight and the emotions just flowed right out of you. You could see this tremendous weight lifted off of your shoulders. Like how would you describe what you were feeling in that moment after she tapped? Just, overwhelming relief and happiness. Um, it, it was everything. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a very emotional person anyways. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, it's just, uh, it was worth it. It made everything worth it. And I, I felt like I made everyone proud. And then you give DC a big old hug and then you apologize after for hugging him because of the blood and such very cool moment. There's just, there's just not a lot of fighters that are like you, Julia. Between that and then hugging Stoliarenko at the face-off, her reaction to that was absolutely priceless, by the way. You really are a raging panda. Like, you live that moniker to the fullest, do you not? <laughs> I mean, I, that's why they gave me the nickname. <laughs> like, I um, I may be nice and cuddly, but I'm still a fucking bear. <laughs> <laughs> so... You, you were telling DC after because he asked you sort of about the emotions that that you were experiencing and you had gone through a lot, you know, over, throughout this year between, you know, losing the fight with Julia originally because of the weight cut and everything that happened with that. Um, and then we found out that you got kicked out of your gym. You mentioned that as well. Like, 
are you like, what happened there? They just, they just kicked you out. Like you just went to the gym being like, Hey, let's go train. And then they, they unceremoniously asked you to exit. Like what happened there? Are you, are, are you okay telling that story? There was a lot of ceremony to it. Um, it was actually, uh, less than 24 hours after my fight got canceled. Uh, we flew back and we were training because one of my, my coaches had a fight the next weekend. So we had to get him ready, um, getting into cut week. So a uh, couple rounds in, coach comes up and yells in front of me and God and everyone and uh, kicks me out. Um, it was just a misunderstanding. Uh, he believed something that isn't true. And um, there was a lot of people that saw what I think is true and they left with me. And so, um, yeah, we, I opened up a gym for my people and it, it was actually a group of us. It wasn't just me. It's not just me. It's, uh, it's a lot of us. So we all went through, uh, huge changes. It wasn't just me. I know a lot of people watching, um, a lot of our students that were watching felt the same relief and uh, emotion that I did as soon as I got that win. Was there, I mean, was, was it a long time coming or did it, like kind of take you by surprise? Um, it, it was from, uh, an injury that wasn't my fault. Um, you know, we do a combat sport and, uh, I don't mean to hurt people. Um, and I didn't do anything wrong. And so, uh, yeah, it was just misunderstanding and, uh, stories made up in their own heads. Yeah, the sport is is great and it can be a little rough at times too, but you mentioned it as, as painful as that must have been for you. You got to bust down some new doors, Julia. Outsiders Combat Club. This is such a cool name, by the way. It resonates perfectly. This is a very big deal. And can I just add that this came together very, very quickly? I mean, I know you had a group of people that kind of followed you out the door and you guys just became this outsider clan. Like, how did this happen and how did this happen so quickly? So uh, from two weeks uh, from when we decided on the name and the location and the people, um, it took two weeks to open a gym. Uh, why? Because my husband and I actually had everything. We've always wanted to open up a gym. And, um, oh, he's here, my husband. Um, <laughs> and so we had everything in our garage, in our home. Actually, our home is very empty now. <laughs> It's it's like hello hello, uh, but here let me. Do you see that? Oh look at that! Everything back there was in our home. That was that's my crazy. Home. That's my life. That's uh, everything that I uh, I wanted. Everything that I've I've always wanted. I've always wanted to be a gym owner, and only because I I want to be a positive influence on people's lives. I want to change lives. I want I want to be remembered for the good that I did. How many, how many people are, are actively students there right now? Do you have like a whole crew? Because it looks like in the pictures, it's like, wow, this is this is pretty We're, amazing. Well, I think we have about 80 students. Um, wow. Yeah, uh, adults and children. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, we quickly outgrew this space. And uh, I think we're going to stay here for a little bit longer. But I, I, I can't wait to just develop it more and have more offerings and more classes and devote more of my time here. And raise my kid here. One day, you know, I'm going to have a kid and I'm going to be able to coach my kid on these mats, which is just surreal to me. The little panda. Uh, yeah, my little baby bear. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, as, as, as pretty as unfortunate as that whole situation with the old gym was, it was kind of the push you needed to, to really ramp this up, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I would have still been there um, if I was, wasn't kicked out. There was a lot of... Um, back and forth that happened behind the scenes. And I'm, I'm thick skinned. I can take that. Um, I didn't want anyone else to take that, that kind of, uh, mental abuse. So, um, I was, I was going to stay, I would have stayed, but I didn't have a choice. Um, I was forced to leave. So, so now you got this new gym, you get your first UFC submission win. And I saw you already back lifting at 5 a.m. this morning, too. You're 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 fully ready with rash guards and all training again today. You are such a machine. How, like, where does this all come from? Like, you just had a war 48 hours ago. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I like I said, I want to be a positive influence. And no one ever, like, 
wants to be the couch potato. No one ever, no one ever looks at someone that's just like laying there and say, Oh, I want to be that person. No, it's someone like you want to be motivated. You want to move. You want to like live your life to its full extent. And, um, I want to, I, I want people to look at me and say, I did this because you said I could. Did you at least smell the roses yesterday when you got home? I mean, as I ran by them. (laughs) (laughs) How long did you run? Like, how many roses did you actually run by yesterday? Gosh, okay. So I didn't run. That's a lie. I walked. My husband, um, he he forced me to walk, but uh, it was still lovely and uh, wonderful. Well, there you go. So outside of being a gym owner, where do we go from here, Julia? I mean, there's certainly some interesting options out there. You're a top 15 fighter at 135 pounds. I'm, I assume that you might bump up a spot or two, but what sort of sticks out to you moving forward after that big win? Well, I'm going to work on my scheduling and hopefully get some more cross training out at Glory MMA uh, with James Krause and uh, work with them a little bit more and uh, just develop my, my skill set here, um, maybe one day I'll be a black belt. I don't know. Uh, I, I know combat base. I'm working with them with, uh, Chris and Melissa Howder. They're amazing, amazing people and so supportive. Um, yeah, just taking it one day at a time right now. I was going to ask you about Kraus because I, I remember when you kind of put the story out there of what happened with the gym, like, I know Kraus sort of put it out there, like, come train with us, like, come see us. Like, did you see that? Like, and how quickly did it take from you seeing that to, to get out there? I thought it was a joke at first. Um, I like, I'm no one, right. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a girl that calls herself the raging panda. Like who, who, who the heck is this girl? And for someone to see me and see my potential, like that was humbling. And so I went, I messaged him and I went up there and I met him and I was awestruck and I was like, okay, I got to put my best foot forward. So I wore a rash guard set that looked like a gi. So it was my no gi gi. And I look absolutely stupid. <laughs> I was like, how oh, is this guy going to take me seriously? But uh, no, it was absolutely awesome. Um, uh, that was humbling. That was fun. And I just, I can't wait to to develop uh, that friendship and that relationship and um, just you know, prove to the world what I can be. He sort of developed this moniker in his own right of being sort of a cheat code as a coach. Like he just sees things like five moves in advance. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty fascinating. Like what did you take away from getting to work with James and that, that hungry team over there? Exactly what you said. They're hungry. They're, they're a pack of wolves. They're, uh, so smart and just good, good people. Um, they're exactly what I want to develop out here at Outsiders. Um, and I think we're on the right path. There you go. Well, very happy for you, Julia. That was an excellent win. You have been through a lot. And like I've said before, it's, it's nice to see one of the good people in our sport have a great moment like that on a national stage like that and a global stage. So congratulations to you. Looking forward to seeing what's next for you. Uh, any, any, any parting words for the peeps before we say goodbye? Just thank you so much, Panda Nation. Thank you so much for believing in me and being uh, on my side through, through thick and thin. And I hope that I have earned your hearts and you guys stay on this, uh, this journey with me. So I appreciate you. Please uh, like, follow, subscribe on all social media platforms at Raging Panda MMA. Um, I'm very active on Instagram. Um, it's, I'm a visual person, so it works for me. Uh, but yeah, hit me up. Thank you. You're the best, Julia. Thank you for the time and congratulations again. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.